Hello everyone, yes, I know, I've missed a couple of weeks since the last video, but I'm here now, so I guess that's what matters. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about getting back to a language or relearning a language after you've taken a break from it, maybe for several weeks or months or even a couple of years. And to talk about this topic, I'm going to use me as a test subject because I've stopped learning Japanese for about six to seven months. I haven't done literally no Japanese during that time. I did a little bit every now and then, um, but I will explain everything in this video. Just so you know, this video is part of my Japanese Progress Update series and it's number 19. So if you've been following this series, uh, it's another one of these videos. If you haven't, I'm sure this video will be helpful to you uh, if you're considering relearning a language, even though I'm using Japanese as an example, but you can see how that can be applicable to any language if you sort of adapt it to your own uh, circumstances. So to get started, I actually want to answer some questions that you guys have asked me on Twitter. So the first question is about what I feel I've lost in my Japanese. And it's kind of difficult to be specific because I didn't take any sort of formal exam in Japanese, so I can't say for sure what I knew exactly. And now I can't tell you what I forgot because I didn't get tested, I guess. However, I do feel like I became very rusty because I will sometimes hear some words and I will forget what they mean. Uh, I kind of forget how to use some grammar points that I used to know quite well before. For example, using the te form as quickly as I used to, now it's much slower. Same thing with the ta form, the ba form, how to use, uh, how to say if slash when in Japanese because there's four different ways to, to say that. And everything pretty much has become more rusty, even vocabulary. I feel like my kanji reading abilities have also decreased a lot. I was kind of comfortable to recognize, I'd say, 50 to 100 kanji, uh, which is not too bad. I mean, I'm still, I was at beginner level after all. And now I feel like I forgot a lot of the kanji. Um, I haven't tested my writing, but I reckon my katakana is going to be hell <laughs> right now. Probably my hiragana is going to be fine, I think. But yeah, however, I don't think you actually forget literally a language. I think what happens is more something like you become more rusty. This means that everything you've learned before, you can reactivate, so to speak. So let's take as an example the te form. And for those of you that don't know Japanese and just here uh, for advice in general, te form is just a verb, a type of verb conjugation in Japanese, basically. So I don't feel like I need to relearn the te form like I never seen it before. Rather, it's more about reviewing. So I think everything you've learned before, you might have forgotten Gotten. I mean, it's not in your active memory, so to speak, but you can reactivate very quickly. So it's not like, imagine you've spent two years learning Japanese and you reached a certain level. It doesn't mean that after a break, you will need two years to reach the same level because a lot of it you will reactivate very quickly. It's hard for me to give you a specific number, but I guess in two or three months of review, I can pretty much catch up on where I was. Maybe even one month, I, I reckon, uh, depending on how much time I spent reviewing, obviously. Someone else asked me if I was going to only review or learn new things. I haven't really decided yet, but my guess is that I will focus obviously on reviewing because the things I feel rusty um, with, about, on, <laughs> are things that are basic. So I definitely need to review those things. But at the same time, I don't want to get bored and I want to learn new things because I think what's exciting about language learning is learning something new whenever you study, um, even if it's not a lot of new stuff. But I think it's important to keep you, yourself um, challenged, I guess, and also to keep yourself interested. I mean, that's the case for me. So now I want to talk about the strategy I came up with to review Japanese and get back to the level I had before. So the first thing I will focus on is reviewing the grammar. And how will I do that? So the first thing is I have a list of all the grammar points I've learned with my uh, teacher because I used to take italki lessons and she very kindly made a list of everything we've covered. So I will go through the list and I'm not going to be too you know, harsh with myself. I don't have to nail everything. I think I will just go with the flow. So if I see a grammar point and I'm like, mm, I don't even remember where that is, then probably I need to revise it. <laughs> if I see it and I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I'm kind of rusty, but you know, as I revise, um, I will be fine. I, you know, it will come back. Or maybe I can get back to it later when I feel sort of more interested because I think I want to focus on things that I really forgot and that I feel are important while the the occasional small grammar point that's not really, you know, massively important uh, can wait a bit. So that means that I'm not going to follow a certain order. I will just sort of go with the flow. So on a given day, I will think, oh, today I'm going to do the ta form. The next day I can decide, oh, today I'm going to review uh, how to connect adjectives, etc, etc. 
I'm lucky enough that I don't have to work towards any exams. That means that I can just, you know, take it easy, really. I can do however much revision I want. I can decide to learn only three times a week or every day if I feel like it, in the morning, night, whatever. I've got full freedom, which is amazing. I did say at the beginning of this series of videos um, that I wanted to do the N5 exam. So for those of you that don't know, it's the exam for Japanese, so JLPT N5. And I decided to not do it in the end because I don't know, no real reason. I just don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> I'm not saying I will never do an exam, um, but for now, I'm not going to do it, I don't think. However, I do use uh, the exam as a reference because all the exams have a list which are not official, admittedly, um, but they are nice because they will tell you a list of grammar points that you should, so to speak, um, learn at any level. I say should like this because, you know, I don't have to do anything. I don't want to really, but it's kind of nice to use it as a guideline because probably if it's, you know, all the grammar in A5, most of it will be useful, most likely. And same thing for vocab and kanji. That will give you an order because if you don't have um, a list, it's kind of hard to know where to start. So at least it kind of gives you um, an order in which to uh, learn the language. Again, I don't have to do things by the book, so to speak, but it can be nice to have something to follow when you're not really inspired or you don't know where to start. I will add to that that I'm lucky enough I'm a language teacher um, and also a long time language learner. So for me, learning languages, I wouldn't say it's easy. I don't think it's easy for anyone, but it's not as confusing and I kind of know in which order to learn things. For example, from being a qualified teacher, I will know that conjugation of the present tense, future and past tense is probably one of the first tenses you should learn as opposed to uh, subjunctive. I don't even know if there's uh, subjunctive in uh, Japanese, but let's imagine. So yeah, so that gives me a, a bit of an advantage, but obviously, um, you know, I'm human and I don't know everything. So I often ask other people or I watch other people going through the same things um, to sort of uh, inspire myself from the experience. So I think this video, uh, the point of this video, I guess, is, for, is to give you a bit of inspiration or at least an idea of how you can go about it. But by all means, do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to tell you this is the way. I mean, I think it's obvious, but I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Something else I will be doing as well, which I mentioned very quickly at the beginning of the video, is uh, learning the vocab. So that's the thing I've been doing on and off. I've talked about Anki a lot. I will put some links in the description box below if you don't know what Anki is. But essentially, it's a flashcard app and I use it to um, review and revise and learn new words as well every day. So far, I've only done reviews of uh, vocab, so I haven't learned anything new, really. Uh, I'm glad I did because I think I would have lost or forgotten a lot of vocab. So I can still remember quite a lot of words, thankfully. But I'm going to keep on doing it more regularly because I don't do it every day. Um, so it'd be nice to, you know, it doesn't have to be much. It can be just 10 minutes, 15 minutes of reviewing vocab every day, anywhere, you know, on the bus, um, when I'm walking, maybe not walking, that'd be hard, but when I'm just chilling or on a break or whatever. So uh, that's why I like Anki, actually. So yeah, obviously vocabulary is going to be important. It's not just grammar. Simultaneously, I will also be using Japanese from Zero Book 3. If you've been following this channel for a while now, you know I've reviewed uh, Book 1 and Book 2. And I'm yet to review Book 3, 4 and 5. Uh, so I still have some work to do. And my long-term goal is to review all the books of the series. So I'm kind of doing two birds, one stone and uh, working through the book and reviewing it at the same time. So there will be a separate video if you're looking forward to it. And again, it's the same idea of having some kind of guide reference because a book will um, sort of impose on you uh, what you should be learning and you just follow it. Um, Obviously, you know, I'm guessing book three is going to be a little bit easy for me. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so if it's too easy, I can just skip and just do what I find useful. But I'm sure it's going to be useful review no matter what. Um, so that's why I think it's a good thing to do. And as I work my way through up through through the series, my English is going bad. <laughs> um, then I will be reviewing and learning new things. So I like to sort of mix, you know, reviewing grammar um, uh, you know, without any textbook, really just revisiting the exercises I've done in my italki lessons, which I will talk about in a second, um, or just watching videos on YouTube. I haven't mentioned that, but when I revise or learn grammar, I like to watch videos because it's a bit more interesting than just reading text. And you can hear the teacher pronouncing the sentences, the word, and I don't know, it just makes it more vivid in my memory and I retain the information much, much better. A couple more points I want to sort of cover is um, I'd like to do more reading. So I haven't really thought this through yet, 
Um, but I've got some graded readers, which I think might be too easy now for me. But again, I'm not sure, but that's sort of my, my, my feeling. Um, there is a Satori reader, which I'm yet to try and review, <laughs> but you know, I've been on the YouTube break as well. My life is a long break at the moment. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be about me trying um, new things and see what, uh, what I like and don't like. And then I will obviously report back to you in a future video once I've got, you know, enough uh, things that I want to share. So you can sort of learn, so to speak, from my experience. I'm saying learn because I don't want to feel like I'm telling you what you have to do, but you, you know what I mean, right? Um, I would also like to um, start watching more uh, TV and films, TV shows, whatever, in Japanese because I really enjoy you know, watching stuff. Um, that's actually how I learned uh, English for the most part. Um, so if you have any sort of suggestions of things I could watch, which are kind of geared to N4 level, so basically high beginner, low intermediate, uh, that'd be ideal. But you know, any show that you enjoy could be fun anyway, even if I don't understand everything. It's still exposure and I think it's nice to have uh, some exposure. And the last point I wanted to talk about in this video is italki lessons, so online lessons, basically. So I've taken, I think, about five to six months of Japanese lessons online, and I loved it. It was great. Um, and I would like to do more of them because they're fun, and it's nice to have a real person to practice with, right? <laughs> Rather than just your computer um, and, you know, in the internet, basically. So I don't think I will take classes just yet because I don't feel too good about taking lessons to just review things that I know I can review on my own. I think it can be good for some people to have someone to sort of accompany them and be like, oh, you need to review, so let's sort of assess what you need to review and then I can t give you a list, for example. That could be one way uh, a teacher could support you with, um, you know, relearning a language. Um, but I feel like I can manage on my own. If I feel like I can't, then yes, for sure, I can, um, you know, consider booking some lessons. But I feel like now I'm not going to do it. However, I am looking forward to doing uh, italki lessons again because I really enjoyed them. Every week I had to do homework so I knew that every week I was doing Japanese for sure, <laughs> no exceptions. So I like that kind of healthy pressure. Obviously if for you that's unhealthy pressure then obviously don't do that. Um, you know make it fun and pressureless, as pressureless as possible. But I know that works well for me so that's something I would like to go back to. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, write me a comment. I read everything, always. Uh, so if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them as much as possible, and as well as possible. And on this note, I will see you next week. Bye.